Shalom Akim. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rekakwadash, for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, and he's no God beside them. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit, and Shalom to the elect, whom the Most High have given us to hear. This is Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. Then it proceeds to go into, he proceeds to tell Moses different feasts, all right? These special feasts, all right? Convocation. Or holy, which means holy meaning what? Separate, sacred, convocation meaning um, rehearsal, you know, a holy meeting, all right, which goes into, um, he went into the Passover, all right, leading into the Feast of Unleavened Bread, then we got the first fruits, the Pentecost, the trumpets, Day of Atonement, Tabernacles, Feast of Dedication, and Feast of Lots. And when you go into um, these high holy days, it's representative of one people coming out victorious over another. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai told us to celebrate that. You know? And it proves that the Lord is not for everybody because if the Lord was for everybody, why would he tell us set, set, set a special day aside every year to celebrate the death of you know or the, the 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 victory of one nation over another because the lord is not for everybody you know and these gutter rats small hats thinking who thinking that they're the real children of the lord which they're not you know the apostle uh tahar did a beautiful well he he didn't do the lesson but he re-uploaded this lesson of this um he, he, he's definitely a small hat and he was going into how the Ebos and the um those of West Africa, all right, most likely have to be descendants of of Israel, you know, and was not the so-called blacks taken from West Africa, all right, and scattered throughout all the four corners of the earth. Okay, and then you got James Adair, which we went into. Um you know, proved who the, the Gadites, you know, who the so-called Native Americans are, really, truly are. All right? And, um, you know, we should, we should really, really, you know, take time out, you know, whether it be to do a lesson. You know, I, I was just telling brothers, Lord willing, we can get out tomorrow and, you know, probably get something to eat, sit together and eat. And just, you know, uh, celebrate the Feast of Dedication. So what's the Feast of Dedication? In which it was, it was actually yesterday. It was actually yesterday. Um, yeah, it came in yesterday. I don't know what's... It's like it, man. I don't know what's going on with this thing now. All right. No biggie. All right, here we go. Yeah. All right, so it says, what is the Feast of Dedication? Let's get into it. The Feast of Dedication, which was once also called the Feast of the Maccabees, was an eight-day winter festival celebrated by the Jews in the month of December, which is wrong, or sometimes later in November, depending on when it fell in the lunisolar Jewish calendar, because the Israelite calendar went off the moon. Today, this festival is called Hanukkah, or the Festival of Light, Festival of Lights. The history of the Feast of Dedication goes back to the intertestamental period and the Maccabean Revolt. And mind you, when you go into St. John the Tenth chapter, the Lord speaks specifically says that our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai was in Jerusalem, and it was the Feast of Dedication. So that proves. That the Apocrypha is canon. Okay. And it goes into. um First Maccabees. Chapter 4. 
right? When Judas and his brethren rededicated the temple after Edomites, which that guy, okay, goes into Antiochus Epiphanes. The history of the Feast of Dedication goes back to the intertestamental, all right, meaning the Apocrypha, which was between the Old Testament and the New Testament, right, which is where you get the, you know, our people in the New Testament being called Gentiles or Greeks, all right, because the, the, the way of the heathen was beat into them and the Maccabean revolt. After the Seleucid king, Antiochus Epiphanes, profaned the Jewish temple and forced the Jews to abandon their sacrifices and adopt pagan rituals, a group of Jewish freedom fighters rose up, defied the oppressive pagan regime, and overthrew the Seleucids. The temple in Jerusalem was rededicated to God. Even since then, the Feast of Dedication has been celebrated to commemorate this meaningful event in Jewish history. All right. And if you think about it, as Esau likes to throw that word anti, you know, medic around, this is an anti medic event. Well, one uh, Shemite overthrows another Shemite. And again, the Lord specifically tells us to keep this from year to year. So this is back at Mac first Maccabees 4. And. um, 45. They thought it best to pull it down, lest it should be a reproach to them, because the heathen have defiled it, wherefore they pulled it down, and laid up the stones in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place, until there should come a prophet to shew what should be done with them. Then they took whole stones according to the law, and built a new altar according to the former, and made up the sanctuary and the things that were within the temple, and hallowed the courts. They made also new holy vessels, and into the temple they brought the candlestick and the altar of burnt offerings and of incense and the table. And upon the altar they burnt incense, and the lamps that were upon the candlesticks they lighted, that they might give light in the temple. Furthermore, they set the loaves upon the table and spread out the veils, and finished all the works which they had begun to make. Now on the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is called the month Kazlu, which November, like I said, is the ninth month. You know, you got octos eight and no if uh, going to nine. Desi ten. It says in the hundred forty and eighth year they rose up times in the morning and offered sacrifices according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offerings which they had made look at what time and what day the heathen had profaned it even in that and that was it dedicated with songs and citherns and harps and cymbals then all the people fell upon their faces worshiping and praising the god of heaven who had given them good success. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. Okay. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowds of gold and with shields and the gates and the chambers they renewed and hanged doors upon them. Thus was there very great gladness among the people for that the reproach of the heathen was put away you know and um according to the book of jeremiah 16 the reproach of the heathen is again going to be put away and it's going to be a new passover to when the most high brings us out of the land of the north and at simultaneously he's going to drown our enemies in fire and brimstone you know deliverance over when our people are delivered out of the hand of the enemy and when the enemy is no longer able to uh break us down that's a beautiful day all right so instead of celebrating thanksgiving christmas death if you will celebrate the high holy days okay the whole world right now is either in death or in folly all right you got the what the world cup whereas northern is just you know <laughs> they all into that 
There's nothing wrong with watching sports. But the point I'm making is, you know, at the time of great persecution, which this devil was looking at, you know, this is the same time where the Lord is put out there for us to uh, celebrate the time of salvation. Okay. And with that, I want to go into the book of Purim. I said the book of Purim, the book of, uh, or the feast Purim, right? Because you had the, um, the last two uh, feasts of the year, which was the feast of dedication or Kanacha, and then the feast of, um, or, or, and then the Purim, which is the lots. All right. So it says Purim, Hebrew lots. I believe it's uh, uh, Paryam. Feast of Lots, a joyous Jewish festival commemorating, right? Not Jewish. It's a joyous Israelite, all right? Hebrew Israelite festival. The survival of the Jews who in the 5th century BCE were marked for death by their Persian rulers. The story is related in the biblical book of Esther. And even in Apocrypha, which is, as, as mentioned before, was the intertestamental what do you say? The intertestamental book, it go, it has the additions to uh to Esther, you know. Get get more into the uh, the secrets of the, the the details of the story, if you will. So it says Haman, chief minister of King Ahasuerus, instanced that Mordecai, a Jew, held him in disdain and refused obeisance, convinced the king that the Jews living under Persian rule were rebellious and should be slaughtered. With the king's consent, Haman set a date for the execution, the 13th day of the month of Dar, by casting lots and built a, a gallows for Mordecai. With word of the planned massacre reached Esther, beloved Jewish queen of Ahasuerus and adopted daughter of Mordecai, she risked her life by going uninvited to the king to suggest a banquet that Haman would attend. At the mill, she was pleaded she pleaded for the Jews and accused this wicked Haman of plotting the annihilation of her people. Upset, the king stepped out into the palace gardens. On returning, he found Haman falling on the couch where Esther was. The king mistook Haman's frantic pleas for mercy as an attack upon the queen. The outraged king ordered that Haman be hanged and that Mordecai be named in his position. Esther and Mordecai then obtained a royal edict allowing Jews throughout the empire to attack their enemies on Adar 13, which uh, was it the, the, the 12th month. And um, also, she especially expressly, Salakia, asked because, you know, she she was sad in a, the she was sad amongst the um, king. And, you know, the king has so much love for her that he would do willing to do whatever she asked. So she told him of the matter. And then when you go into the story, as um, Haman was getting ready to uh, ask <laughs> the Lord to put Mordecai and his people to death because Mordecai didn't uh, bow down to him. Um, the king, when you read the story, the king had just found out what Mordecai did and, and you know, um, telling him about the, the two uh, the two king guards who's looking to slay him, you know? So you had Esther, who had the king's heart, and then Mordecai, who was able to win the king over by concealing that uh, thing into him, all right? So, and this all conspired before um, Haman was, you know, looking to make his petition. You know, <laughs> so the Lord, man, the Lord stepped in beforehand. And this goes to show you, too, how the scriptures say, um, you know, I think about the scripture, Isaiah 59, um, where the Lord said, uh, what do you say? When Amy shall come and look like a flood, I shall lift up and um, um, I should lift up the standard, meaning a way to escape. All right. You know, so. um. Yeah, man, it just goes to prove that, you know, salvation is uh is warranted.
you know, salvation is warranted and it's something that we should be focusing on, especially in this time with all this pain that, you know, <laughs> uh, all this pain, you know, our brothers are facing, are, are, are facing. And um, I'll end it off here. This is Revelation chapter 13. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, 13 and 9. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. All right. And this is our faith. Again, knowing that the Lord hath done it before. And when at time to where we celebrate um, that right, that beautiful uh, uh, deliverance, you know, hey, so if that shallow to the elect.